What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerdcastle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Road Warden's Demo. This is a very, very well animated kind of trichrome RPG uh, that's very much in the style of old RPGs from like the Apple IIe days. So effectively what they do with this game is they're going to give you a lot of text to read, decisions to make, you're going to have equipment, you're going to have gear and whatnot. But due to kind of the limitations of the time, you couldn't have a whole lot of animation and things going on. This game is sort of like conjuring that old vision for me from what I've seen so far. I did grow up, you know, playing games on an Apple IIe, and I feel like they've locked it down, but they've given it kind of a modern flair and sort of a modern level of polish. So anyways, we're going to dive on in. We're going to spend a little bit of time with the demo today. If after watching this is something that you wanted to get for yourself... I will have a link for you down below so that you can try it out. The demo is publicly available for right now. The game is planning on a release in 2021, although we don't really have a figure on when or what quarter that's going to take place in. So anyways, let's have fun with our preview here today. You can also check out other links down below like my Twitch stream and like my Discord and all that kind of fun stuff. I would love to have you, but let's go. Everybody knows to stay away from the wilderness. Most people would never risk a lonely journey. Road Wardens not only accept this struggle, they embrace it. They deliver messages, assist merchants, burn human corpses, and if possible, get rid of the beasts and highwaymen. They live on the road, die young, or retire early. It's a dangerous job, but it's a respectable one, and it pays well. The palisade is still standing. You don't see any wolves around, and there's no stench of blood. It's a good sign. The gate is ajar, almost welcomingly so, but the thought of spending the night in a camp such as this makes you anxious. A wooden wall might keep away goblins and pebblers, but not dragonlings, not trolls. It would be safer to search for another shelter, but it doesn't look like you have a choice. The sky is already darkening. You can hear the tired breath of your palfrey. It's been carrying you on its back since sunrise. It may not be hungry, but it does need to rest. You're far less likely to find cutthroats within these walls than to stumble upon bloodthirsty monsters while roaming through the night. Okay, let's look around cautiously. You were supposed to meet with a group of soldiers. This should be the place that you're looking for, but you need to stay vigilant if you don't want to get in any trouble. The birds, the insects, and mammals living amongst the trees are loud as usual. If there's anyone inside the camp, they probably didn't notice the sound of trotting hooves, unless they're surveying the area from a concealed position. They shouldn't be aware of your presence. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to try to sneak inside. I feel like that's going to... If there's somebody living inside of there and I try to sneak up on it, I feel like that's going to make me look suspicious, right? So if somebody walks up to your house and just bangs on the door, you go and you answer it, right? Somebody comes up to your house, like, opens the door, like a crack, and is, like, peeking in, you know what I mean? Like, meh, meh. I don't know. Baby, get the boomstick. Uh, let's just go straight on in, chin held high. With your heavy boots touching the ground, you realize how tired you actually are after the entire day of riding. Your back and legs, they're gonna hurt tomorrow. You can already feel it. With any luck, your axe won't be needed here. All you want now is an inn with a free table, a decent chair, a nice mug of beer, and maybe some warm stew. But maybe another time. You notice the road is slowly getting covered with grass. It must not be used very often. Okay. If it's a military camp, it does not look the part. Much of the space is wasted and there are barely any tents. You see some wood is prepared for a campfire, but there is no fire in sight. Nothing special, really. At least the palisade looks firm. Two people are sitting at a table, one of them holding a cup. Even though you don't try to move quietly, it takes them a few breaths to even glance in your direction. Your presence doesn't seem to have made them any more energetic. The one that's closer to you raises his hand and waves you in a greeting. His hair and beard are messy, there are bags under his eyes. He wears a simple, dirty shirt, though his high boots look expensive, durable. A mace with a head covered in iron hangs at his side, but he doesn't reach for it. He only smiles. After a closer look, you realize that the second soldier is a woman. She's wearing a gambeson, the most common type of armor there is, though hers looks quite masculine. Wasn't made for a female figure. Perhaps she's not the original owner. Her head is shaved, a common method of treating flesh-eating bugs. She looks at you with a gentle smile, though her absent eyes make her appear drained. You could believe that these two are soldiers, one of, the two, one of those who were left on duty for far too long. Eh, let them speak first. Well, it's nice to see an unharmed traveler in this godforsaken shithole, says the bearded man. Makes me just a tiny bit hopeful. His voice is strong, though not full of confidence. I'm guessing you'll be staying the night. 
We're soldiers, he and I, adds the armored woman just a moment ago. She seemed to be half asleep, but now she sounds soothingly calm and tranquil. We'll do our best to keep the camp safe, but if you could take the first watch, it'd definitely be a help. If they're not lying, these are the people you're looking for. Through, though, there should be more of them. An entire squad. Sure, I'll take the first watch. Fantastic. She rubs her hands together. I don't remember when was the last time I had more than a half night of sleep. The time before midnight should be the calmest. Just wake us up if anything happens. The man smirks. It's easy to wake us up. Just yell. And then he takes a drink from his mug. Alright, um, I'm, whenever you meet people, you can influence how they perceive you by selecting an attitude. Oh, so we can be polite. Oh, we actually, like, choose sort of like our stance. Okay, alright, we can be vulnerable, we can be intimidating, we can be friendly. Yeah, let's be friendly. I was hoping to meet with your lieutenant. Could we talk for a bit? The woman theatrically sighs, stands up, and dusts off her gambeson and steps towards you relaxed. We most definitely can, though being a lieutenant is still somewhat new to me. There's a sword at her side, but she doesn't pay attention to it. Are you the messenger? Lose your mount, huh? She observes you with curiosity. Are you looking for help? I'm your new road warden. My horse is outside. Really? The soldier in the shirt leans forward. Well, that explains how you got here in one piece all by yourself. You better bring the horse here, adds the lieutenant. We don't have any hay, but I bet it dreams of getting released from its saddle. She's thinking for a couple of breaths. I'm a Tulia, by the way. I have instructions we were meant to tell you. She reaches out her hand in a polite handshake. Alright. Uh, let's see. Can I still choose stuff right now? Oh, you kind of choose it like at the outset and then you follow it through. Uh, I'll shake your hand. What do you want people to call you? Alright, well they can call me Splat. The Rogue Warden! The lieutenant's hand is strong like a manual laborer's. Her grasp is confident. The shake is slight. Then she steps away. Put your horse wherever you like, though you better keep it away from the tents. We don't need the smell of the dung. And that also reminds me, the shoulder in the t-shirt, or in the shirt, stands up. We don't really have one to spare. If you don't carry one, you'll probably have to use a blanket or something. That's okay, I'm used to sleeping under the stars. You turn away with no rush and walk towards your horse. It nervously looks around and snorts to show its discomfort. But though you're used to spending time with palfreys, it's an impressively large creature. Not only higher than you, but also massive, wide, and heavy as it is. You know, I'm kind of a short dude. So saying that a horse is bigger than me, unless it's like an Arabian, every horse is bigger than me. That's pretty much all horses tower over me. I'm a little dude, alright? So like, I don't know, like, the game is not taking into account my normal stature right now, but all horses tower over the top of me. If necessary, you need only a couple confident quick movements to sit down in the saddle, but most people wouldn't even know where to begin. From every side, it looks like an unattainable barrier of flesh. Horses are not a common sight in the Empire, and not an indigenous species either. They were brought here from the conquest in the south and can't survive in the forest by themselves. They can run for a long time, but not fast enough to escape all of the local monsters. It's a disciplined beast, however, trained by the experts since it was a foal. It'll keep it together. Alright, well as long as I'm on the road, the horse is my friend. Once you show up, the horse makes a few steps towards you. It snorts again rebukingly. It doesn't like to be left behind, even for such a short time. You scratch the base of its neck with confidence and energy, just the way that it likes it. People avoid referring to their palfreys as pets, as either he or she. All animals are considered to be monsters in disguise. Being emotionally attached to them is believed to bring bad luck, but you know that horses are different. They want companionship, and they want to be taken care of. Sure, it's very difficult to tame them, but at least they aren't as aggressive as wolves. You honestly don't understand how someone can reject the friendship of such a beautiful creature. You move behind the gate nearby the fire. While the riding equipment is not that heavy for such a strong animal with enough time, it comfortably or uncomfortably rubs the skin. Removing the saddle alone makes the horse nicker with relief. You take a couple of minutes to examine its back just in case. You wish it had something better to eat than this shabby grass. You should probably find an inn. Alright, and we'll unpack everything. You didn't pack that much, fewer than you'd wish for, but you've lost one sack while fleeing from roaming crimson ghouls. Worst of all, you've no rope left. But maybe the soldiers could share one. Shouldn't cost more than a dragon bone. In the saddlebags, you've gathered some clothes to change, wooden dishes, a tinderbox, things to make a torch, your cape, bandages, food rations, a knife, a purse, nothing really altogether that special. After all, the heavier your package is, the more difficult it is for your horse to run. But aside from that, you've more valuable things, ones that are essential for your trade. So we can be a scholar. It looks like we can be a wizard. 
and then we could be a fighter. I'm gonna go with a fighter, actually. It, it seems like you'd probably be a badass fighter. Like, this seems like it's probably, it looks like it comes with an axe and an old gambeson, so it's probably somewhere in between warrior and spell sword. but I don't know. And then we have a scholar over here who apparently their ability is that they are literate, and then they also have musical instruments, brew magical potions, and other things. Okay. Yeah, let's go with the fighter. You collect your stuff and check if it's in good shape. You do it almost automatically and routinely, and as usual, you don't really find anything out of the ordinary, but you feel better knowing it. Okay, so apparently I can open my inventory too from right here. Oh uh, yeah, there we go. We've got our own little inventory menu, so we've got a decent gambeson. Is there anywhere where I can see my stats and get like an idea of like what it is all that gear does? As an RPG enthusiast, I always like to have the stat sheet where it shows hard percentages. The soldiers are at the table again. They observe you and quietly talk to one another, though they don't really try to hide it. They eat something out of wooden bowls, and your stomach growls. You see another wooden bowl put at a previously unused end of the table, as well as a wooden log that is meant to be used as a chair. So I took a second, and it seemed like it was really, really quiet. And I was like, you know, it's weird, because the game seems really well put together. How come it doesn't have any music or anything as of right now? Like, I figured maybe they're in that point in development where they hadn't, like contracted all that yet. As it turns out, I went to the settings and the music was disabled by default. I didn't touch anything. I installed the game and I, I started the demo and the music was muted by default. So there you go. Now it's going to be a little bit less quieter. We've got some mood music. We've got some ambience. Okay. You see another wooden bowl put at a previously unused end of the table as well as a wooden log that's meant to be used as a chair. Sure, absolutely. It's a half full bowl of awfully looking cold gruel, a common meal during times of hardship and you've had it thousands of times before. This specific bowl is filled with water, hog millet, some strange looking cereal and blueberries. You enjoy the blueberries and only the blueberries. A meal of the poor, a part of you thinks, but you know better than that. To welcome you with something to eat, even with a humble dish like this one, is a kind gesture. Soldiers live for and with their comrades in arms, constantly on the move from one part of the realm to another making sacrifices to protect their group as they face dozens of hideous creatures. Their lives are filled with discipline, hardship, camaraderie. Road wardens, on the other hand, learn to work by themselves. They seldom engage in open combat, patrol the same roads for years. They help nearby settlements to stay in touch, but also maintain commerce, settle down, make friendships. They usually follow their own judgment, different responsibilities for a different lifestyle. I asked Tulia what she can tell me about this area. She shows no sign of previous tiredness. She's focused and carefully chooses her words, sometimes pausing to think about additional details. Whenever it happens, she glances at something in the distance, but for most of the time, she does not avoid eye contact. I'm afraid I can tell you less than I'd like to and probably less than I should. She nods towards the other soldier. As you can see, there's not a lot of us left. At the beginning of the summer, there was eight of us here, including our previous lieutenant. Five are dead and one ran away in tears. We're also strangers to this land. The things that you know about this place can help me do my job. The man leads forward, his legs nervously shake, and he sounds enthusiastic like a kid who's asking a bard to sing one more story, tell a joke, make a magic trick, whatever it takes to escape from boredom. You realize his beard hides a much younger face than you had originally thought. What did the officials tell you when they sent you here? I expect not that much. They have no control over this land. Sure, I'll share what I know. Why not? It looks like I can't choose, like, a, a social stance anyways, so... You tell them how little intel you've received. You are warned that the area is wild, dangerous, and unfamiliar. It's just too far away from the city to keep under control. In its isolation, the land has become mysterious, and nobody knows how many villages, bandits, or monsters may be found in these hills and forests. There aren't really any maps that could help you, and you've just found the last military squad that was sent here. You know that from time to time, new people come here to look for boundless opportunities, and most of them never return. Do they turn into walking corpses, or maybe they find what they're looking for? Nobody could tell me, so I was looking for your guidance. The lieutenant drinks from her cup and crosses her legs, ankle on knee. Seeing her chair makes you doubt she'll be able to find a comfortable position. So go ahead, where should we start? What happened to the previous road warden? As you speak, they seem indifferent. They confirmed that they met him a few times, but he was only willing to speak with the previous lieutenant, and after his death, the road warden stopped showing up in camp. Late in spring, half a year ago, you finally ask what they think about him, and the bearded soldier is the first one to answer. Asterion isn't looking for friendships. He's always busy, drowning in things to take care of. Even if he had spent a night or two in the camp, he'd be sitting somewhere by himself, sharpening his sword, fixing mail, 
cleaning clothes. He was writing down some notes on this wax tablet of his, but honestly, I wouldn't even recognize his voice now. Unlike us, Asterian never gets bored, Tulia chuckles, although she doesn't express joy. He's a secretive man when he needs to be, but the locals talk about him warmly, so maybe he just doesn't like us. Is? Was? Is he dead? Did he disappear? If anyone knows it, they aren't telling us, the man shrugs. Unless he's locked in someone's basement, I doubt he's alive. We haven't seen his lizard, and he hasn't tried to contact us, even though we were asking about him for a bit. No idea where he went off to. If the officials have hired you, they clearly didn't expect him to return, and I bet something already ate him. Richer road wardens often use four-legged meat-eating saurians as mounts. They have to be tamed and trained since they're hatching, but unlike horses, they defend themselves from Imperial monsters. On the other hand, they enjoy attacking nearby targets a little bit too much. You prefer to be assisted by a fast, reliable palfrey. At least it won't suddenly sink its teeth into an innocent passerby. Alright, well what was he looking for? Did he leave you a message? Neither one of us had any insight into his business, says Tully. Our previous lieutenant surely knew more. We looked through his things after he had died, but he didn't really leave us any clues. We took a look at what Asterion left here, but, uh, wait, that reminds me. She stands up, takes a few steps away, and looks towards the nearby tent. Asterion has kids in a village nearby the city. I was planning to take all his things there. A purse, his backup spear, a decent bow, some potions. He's got treasures. She finally turns back, but I'd prefer to bring them the truth about their father. So you want me to find out what happened to him into exchange for his stuff? Here's the catch. She dusts off the hilt of her sword. I fired a messenger to ask the commanders for further directions. Since she hasn't returned, you know nothing about the new orders. She either ran away or something happened to her. Doesn't matter now. We'll wait for five more days, and on the sixth dawn, we're breaking camp, and we're moving to the city with all the things that we have. What do you think? Can you manage? All right. Well, if he's alive, I don't think he's going to be happy if I take all his possessions, but fair enough. Okay. Let's ask him about the peninsula and the rope. Let's see here. What do you know about the peninsula? It's difficult to start, so I'll tell you what I know. How long did it take you to get here from the city? With your palfrey's descent... Uh, if your palfrey's decent, I guess four or five days? When you confirm, she continues. The roads here are shitty, but you could get to the coast in about a day, as long as you don't make any stops. You know the situation? Why no ship can get here? You nod. Ships are essential for traders. Having a secure area, or a secure sea route, allows the city officials to keep in touch with the coastal villages collect taxes, move the soldiers around, transport lumber, bring back fresh seafood, but trying to maintain order on a wild coast such as this one is as wise as trying to fill the ocean depths with coins. Because of the rocks, you can't stop a ship five miles from the shore. I don't know that much about fishing, but apparently it also doesn't go that great. So there's not many people living at the shore, and they don't really care about staying in touch with the city for whatever reason. They were never hostile towards us, though. They mostly keep our distance. They haven't come to this camp, yet whenever we go to get supplies in the nearby roadside inn, the locals are happy to trade and play dice. Okay, so why not just go to a settlement? The man looks at his superior. She doesn't look back, instead staring at you, and her words are quiet. You can sense her discomfort. Don't take it the wrong way, Splat, but are you a religious person? Um. Yeah, dude, I'm from a small village. For me, the freedom of body, mind, and soul are the virtues of life. My community is unique and independent, so are its members. I see. She, you don't see any discontent on her face, yet she looks away uncertain of how to act. I don't know much about this river of faith, I'm afraid, but I'm sure we're not that different. I'm a unite myself, she says with a sort of pride in her voice. Unite is a term referring to the follower of the common church. Okay, so explain what you had in mind. The people here are disquieting. Every few words, she taps the table with her finger. They follow all sorts of beliefs that would need to be abandoned if they were interested in trade deals with the city. I'll give you an example. She draws invisible lines with her index finger as though she's pointing at a map. Stay on the road, ride north for a bit, and when you get to the crossroads, turn on the left. After a few hours, you'll come to a swamp and a large village, then ride some more as far north as you can. Turn left again, and you'll get to another place. It's not exactly pagan, I don't think. It even has a priest who claims to be an Aramite. An Aramite, huh? So a free church. They do all kinds of crazy shit there. The man looks uneasy. They use the undead to cut trees and work in the swamps. They don't even burn the bodies of their relatives. Terrifying place. You've heard tales of these since you were a child. If an isolated settlement manages to survive without the city's influence as its customs and traditions grow more and more alien. Every generation learns how to adapt to dangerous conditions they have to deal with. Their river of faith gets muddy from the rustic pagan traditions. 
your church often warns its number about the crazy druids, necromancers, and blood sorcerers who are supposedly going to bring doom upon any village that won't banish them. But you're always hoping that these rumors were a bit exaggerated. If the soldiers are right and this is the real deal, it could be dangerous. You can see why we're not eager to go there if it ain't necessary. I'm sure they'd be more welcoming to a road warden, though. The majority of the roads here are unprotected. There's almost no inns around, even fewer than there are hamlets. People need your help. The man turns a bit and points a finger to the northwest. If you're heading to the village, you'll get to an inn first. On horse, you'll get there in less than a day, I think. It's a safe place, the inn. You can talk with the innkeep or the guards and ask them for the road. Okay, to the east? Hard to tell. There's a thick forest there. I saw a road that looks like a tunnel covered by leaves. We're afraid of beasts, so we mostly stood nearby this camp or on the western roads. Any large monsters worth mentioning? We saw all sorts of things. Trolls, goblins, cats large and small, running birds, howlers, wolves, spiked boars, sheep eaters, tons of griffins, but we managed to avoid the majority of them. Yeah, some may definitely catch up with most mounts. Tulia looks at her companion, but you're not sure how to read the body language. Though a palfrey should be fine. There's a lot of high plants in this peninsula. Flying creatures usually stay nearby the ocean. Since there's not that many humans around, the animals are busy fighting amongst themselves. The man cracks his knuckles. They fight more for food than territory. Don't provoke them and you may ride fast. Just count on luck. Okay. I've lost my rope. Can you spare one? You're in luck. She reaches towards a crate and pulls aside a large linen sack and then grabs a rope that was covered by it. She brings it back and nonchalantly sits it down on her chair. If you want it, you can take it. I plan to leave it behind. Cool. Looks like we've got a regular rope made out of hemp fibers. I mean, they were just going to leave it anyway, so I don't see a reason to give up my belongings in trade if they were just going to, like, leave it here anyways. All right, if you were me, where would you go next? To the inn. Definitely. Okay. Well, I don't think I know what I need. You sure? We may not be around the next time you get here. Yeah, let's do it. I agree. Uh, may you do better than Asterion did. Stay vigilant. And she winks at you. Okay. Thanks for the help. She cheerfully smiles, but once again, it looks like you have an opportunity to see a different person. Someone hidden behind her facade of a soldier. Not a problem, as the companion. You realize you still haven't learned his name. It's nice to be entertained by something different than a group of wolves skulking around. Feels nice to walk again, but it would be even nicer to lay down and close your eyes. As you approach your horse, you make sure it feels comfortable, but apparently it's already napping. If it won't be alerted for an hour or so, maybe it can finally lay down and truly rest. You want to check if your equipment's fine, but once you start unpacking, you realize you've already done it just a couple of moments ago. You go to a barrel and splash water on your face. It makes you more aware of how much you need a bath. You survived quite a long journey and reached an unfriendly area. Your first success as a road warden. Okay, so we've got injuries over here as well, so it's giving us our HP. All right, I'm on first watch. The man's eager to guide you. Just look around for a couple hours. Griffins run around, though they won't try to jump over the palisade, probably. Better watch out for apes. They climb pretty good and carry out food or trinkets. There's this really loud werefolk that comes close to the wall, but has never tried to get in. He points at a gate. Lieutenant and I will soon block the entrances, and they're real heavy, so if anybody comes here and looks for shelter, call to us to help us out, help you out. It almost never happens, though. And if they're chased by wolves or something, eh, throw them a rope. He scratches his head. If it gets cold, make a fire. And the most comfortable place to look around is on the watchtower. You may want to put a blanket up there or something. He looks at you for a little while, confused by the question. Oh, here. He turns around towards a pile of crates. Climb up on the tallest one. You're going to have a great view. But you know it's not true. You won't be able to spot movement under the southern part of the palisade. Maybe the danger can tends to come from the north. Also, he pauses, then continues boldly. Thank you for your willingness to aid us, even after all the writing you've made. He smiles and points at the tent on the other side of the camp. I can handle a couple of hours sleeping on the ground. If you want, you can rest there just this once. I got a pallet inside. All right. You put your blanket on the tallest crate and sit down on it. From time to time, you have to change positions to avoid back pain. But it's not that bad. You may be tired, but you do your best to stay awake. The night is warm. The sporadic summer breeze brings nothing but gentle refreshment. Since there aren't that many trees around, the light of the stars and the moon are enough to follow major movements and recognize various shapes, including a great stack of wood nearby the gate. During your watch, you have a chance to see monsters of many shapes and sizes, like three horned deers trying to challenge one another, but before they can clash, the predators appear. It's a spectacle. Two large mammals loudly try to intimidate a two-legged feathered lizard, which leads its much smaller offspring. Ultimately, both sides walk away, not willing to risk the fight nor ready to admit defeat. 
You hear death screams of prey and the mating calls of forest monkeys. Running birds are chasing small animals and a group of muskox and lazily chew the nearby grass, preparing themselves to sleep. Weirdly enough, you see a raccoon dog running together with a lynx acting playfully. You note to yourself that apparently such a companionship is a thing, that you don't think it's a crucial piece of information. Thankfully, you never have to intervene. You just sit there watching the forest trying to outlast your sleepiness. You can only guess how much time has passed. Once you feel you've had enough, you climb down and go to a tent. A couple of words are all it takes to wake up the man. You confirm that nothing important has happened to prepare for sleep. Nice. Sleeping in a tent is not the peak of your dreams, but it's a much welcomed rest. The mattress is comfortable and keeps the cold soil away. It's peaceful here, and the moonlight keeps the outside world on the verge of dark creepiness. You listen to your own breath and quickly find a comfortable position. Your job, or maybe an adventure, starts tomorrow. You can't but help but think about the things you were asked to do by the commanders that hired you. The city officials want to take control over this realm. You're not only here to protect the locals, but even more importantly, explore the peninsula find valuable spots that would convince the merchants to organize a new trade route, figure out if there are any precious resources that could invite more settlers. You need to talk with people who live here and get to know them and maybe even convince them to collaborate with your employers. Could the locals resist the arrival of soldiers? Are they going to oppose the laws of the common church? Are there any activities that need to be eradicated such as blood sorcery, necromancy, robbery, slavery? Once you finish your reconnaissance, you should return to the city and report back to the commanders. You can collect your reward. All right. So we're choosing basically what our ambition is right now. I want to bring peace and order. That sounds like a very paladinish thing to do, and I'm a big paladin guy. Your half-woken senses are catching the sounds of the wild forest, all the roars, whimpers, howls, and singing. Your instincts keep you alerted and anxious, though the pleasant, humid late summer air slowly evens it out. You're still thinking about your goal, but you need to gather your strength. Okay, let's go ahead and sleep. You're woken by the sunlight and you feel well rested and ready. Without haste, you gather your things. After a couple of breaths, you notice a smell like a roast, a burning meat. Disgust slowly crawls across your consciousness and you exit the tent. You instinctively look at your horse while it's nervously looking around. At least nobody slaughtered it while you were sleeping. The sound and stench of fire spur you to investigate. The gate is open. Both soldiers standing by a pyre, as humble a pyre as can be. The man looks at it quietly and contemplatively. Tulia turns towards you. Hey, we use the horse's manure for the fire, so don't worry about cleaning it up. You see a body amongst the flames, and it's impossible to tell if it belongs to a male or a female, but you're guessing an adult. The burning process won't be over for a couple more hours. Traveler or undead? The latter. She must have been woken up recently. Not enough magic in her to let her understand that she can't get inside the camp without climbing. Took her down with a spear from a safe distance. If she had been affected by one more fog, she'd have been a real danger. Even now, it took a couple of hits to knock her down. Sooner or later, every human body wakes up, gaining more strength with every soul it devours and every moment it spends in the fog. Burning the dead is not just a religious practice, it's a necessity. Soldiers, priests, mayors, road wardens. Making a large pyre takes time, but it saves life. Tulia calls the undead a she. Interesting. Most Unites hesitate to do so. It's time to go. Run away from the stench, huh? I don't blame you. She sneers and walks away. Remember, if you manage to find out what happened to Asterion, we're here for five more days. Feel free to come back if you find no place to sleep or if we can help you somehow. You shake hands as she smiles. Once again, her grip is firm and confident. It's good to meet you. Good luck on the road. Good luck on the road. An old farewell which became infamously mocked in a number of songs and tales. It's seldom used without ironic undertones, but you don't find any hint of sarcasm in Tulia's voice. You wonder how many acts of kindness like this one you're going to experience in the following days. And she goes back to the pyre. Well, this is the Road Warden. Uh, we didn't get to do combat or anything, but uh, maybe sometime when the game comes out, I'll be able to stream it or something like that. Thus far, I really, really actually, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I think that they've really locked in the music. Uh, it's got a sort of like ambience, like an atmosphere to it. The writing feels like it's very good. I've caught a couple of typos here and there, but whoever wrote this definitely has a solid grasp of prose and how to write in an interesting and descriptive way. So that's good. I'm definitely interested in figuring out what ways this system works down here. It seems like kind of a cool mechanic, choosing how you want to approach a situation verbally before you enter on into it. And of course, I'm interested in seeing what combat looks like as well, but we're out of time for the day. This is Road Warden. 
the demo thereof. The game's coming out next year, but I figured I'd give you a little sneak preview for those of you that are fond of narrative adventures and maybe you grew up playing choose-your-own-adventure novels like I did. Uh, I'll see you all later. Thank you for stopping on in. Don't forget to check out the Discord and the other associated media that go along with the Nerd Castle. You can get the game down below. And that's all I got for you today. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today it was Road Warden. Tomorrow it'll more than likely be something else. Take care out there, everybody.